This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. Automatic emergency braking for pedestrians is a big step forward in automotive safety. Except for one thing, it doesn't work very well at night. So now the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety is adding nighttime testing for AEB, and it says automakers need to improve. It evaluated 23 midsize SUVs and small pickups, and it gave them four different ratings, superior, advanced, basic, or no credit. But only four earned the highest superior rating. The Ford Mustang Mach-E, Nissan Pathfinder, Toyota Camry, and Toyota Highlander. And more than half of the vehicles tested only got basic or no credit scores. In daytime testing, 19 of the 23 vehicles received the top superior or advanced ratings. Pedestrian fatalities have been on the rise in the U.S. over the last decade, and last year, 7,300 people were killed, with three quarters of those occurring at night. Starting next year, vehicles will have to earn a superior or advanced score to receive a top safety pick plus award from the IIHS. And that means their AEB systems will have to work at night. Ukraine was a major supplier of wire harnesses for European automakers before Russia invaded. But the war caused all kinds of production issues, and that forced automakers to scramble to find new places to make harnesses. Czech automaker Skoda, which is part of the VW Group, turned to the Czech Republic, Morocco, and Romania. Skoda says it can now double current production volumes if needed. Elon Musk has set the extremely ambitious goal of Tesla selling 20 million EVs a year by the end of the decade. Reuters did an analysis of what it will take to reach that milestone, and it would take an enormous effort. 20 million EVs is about 13 times what Tesla is expected to sell this year. That would require the automaker to build seven to eight more gigafactories, and it would need a new one of those every 12 months. On top of that, it needs batteries. Tesla currently uses about 100 gigawatt hours of batteries a year. 20 million EVs would require about 3,000 gigawatt hours, which would use up to four times the raw materials that the entire EV industry will use this year. The additional plants and battery capacity would cost Tesla an estimated $600 billion. And speaking of Tesla, it's suing the state of Louisiana. And that's because Louisiana bans direct sales of cars to consumers. Tesla says it violates state and federal antitrust laws that pertain to interstate trade. It also says the state is restricting the leasing and servicing of its vehicles. And all this shows how powerful car dealers are when it comes to blocking Tesla and other EV startups that do not want to use franchise dealers to sell their EVs. And it's going to be interesting to watch because it could set a precedent for more lawsuits to follow. With global reach across three continents, Tajin Automotive Technologies make vehicles lighter, safer, and more eco-friendly. Tajin Automotive Technologies, the formula for better mobility. Taking a ride in a human-sized drone might be closer than you think. Urban air mobility provider Volocopter says its goal is to launch before the Paris Olympics in 2024. Right now it's conducting flight tests on the Volo City, its urban air taxi, which features 18 propellers mounted in a ring around the cabin. 
These tests are meant to lead to the aircraft's certification and eventually its commercial launch. And like so many of these aircraft startups, Volocopter is backed by a couple of automakers, which includes Mercedes and Geely. And here's another automaker that's getting into EV tolls, or electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft. Honda just put out a new brand campaign that focuses on all the things people said it couldn't do, which of course it eventually does, like building cars and airplanes and having success in racing. And at the end, it shows a digital rendering of Honda's EV tall, which indicates it's a hybrid that runs on e-fuel. So, like Toyota and Porsche, it looks like Honda wants to develop synthetic fuels as a solution for reducing carbon emissions. Earlier this month, Bridgestone pioneered the use of tires made from Guayule in IndyCar racing. And now it's investing $42 million to grow Guayule on 25,000 acres in Arizona. It's all part of Bridgestone's plans to use Guayule for commercial use at scale by 2030. Guayule is a shrub that grows in deserts and uses half the water of other crops like cotton and alfalfa and it can be used to make tires. Bridgestone says this will help meet its goal of becoming carbon neutral and developing tires that are 100% recyclable. We want to know what drives your testing. OTA, connected car, diagnostics, remote testing, Intrepid Control Systems is here to help you work from anywhere. Intrepid Control Systems, driven by your data. At Schaeffler, we pioneer motion. Electrifying mobility. Manufacturing smarter. Reducing CO2 emissions. Making energy production clean. Schaeffler pioneers motion to advance how the world moves. The U.S. is rapidly building up its EV public charging network, but executives at Navistar say there's a problem with the way it's being done. Public charging stations don't leave room for big electric rigs or even electric pickups that are pulling a trailer. For example, if you have an F-150 Lightning in a trailer, you first have to drop the trailer, pull the truck up to the charger, charge up, then back out, and hook the trailer back up again. Semis and school buses can't even get close enough to most chargers. So Navistar is saying, just leave enough room for big vehicles to use public chargers, or at least the ones that are close to highways. And yes, big electric rigs and buses use the same CCS charger you'll find on most electric vehicles. When an automaker is developing a new vehicle, how many times do you think it has to crash test it? It's probably more than you think. Despite all the simulation software that automakers use, and despite the fact that it correlates quite well to real-world crashes, there's still a gap between virtual and real crashes. Toyota says it conducted 70 crashes when it was developing the new Tundra pickup. In fact, at its Michigan test lab near Ann Arbor, Toyota conducts four crashes a week, and it learns something new from almost every crash. The good news is, once it gets a platform fully tested, it doesn't need to conduct as many crashes for vehicles that are developed on the same platform. So, for example, the Toyota Sequoia, which is built on the same platform as the Tundra, only needed 20 crashes to get it all right, instead of 70 like the Tundra needed. The Cadillac Escalade is probably the most profitable vehicle that General Motors sells. But did you know there was a big fight in the company over whether they should make it or not? A number of people in GM thought Cadillac customers would never buy a luxury SUV, and they tried to prevent GM from building it. And that's what we'll be talking about on AutoLine After Hours this Thursday. John Smith, who ran Cadillac and fought hard to bring the Escalade out, will be our guest. 
and we'll also get his opinions on Cadillac's goal to go all electric by 2030. So join John and Gary for what will be an amazing look into the inner workings of a giant car company. But that brings us to the end of today's show. Thanks for making AutoLine part of your day. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, solutions for your journey. Experience Dolby Atmos, anywhere, anytime. Intrepid Control Systems, over-the-air engineering, boost your game. Scheffler, we pioneer motion. And by Tajin Automotive Technologies, the formula for better mobility.